In this video, I'll walk you through our DevExtreme chat component. The chat component integrates seamlessly with several of our product lines, including our dashboard and reporting tools. It offers a rich, customizable messaging interface that works out of the box with our other components. In this demo, I'll walk you through how to use the chat component in a React application connected to a local Olama model using the Olama chat API. This setup lets us build a fully functional AI-powered chat interface with minimal setup. We'll focus on the React version today, but we also created the exact same demo in Angular, Vue, and jQuery. Each version is functionally identical. The GitHub repo containing the code for all our supported frameworks is linked in the description below, along with links to our demos and documentation. Before we begin, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave any questions you have in the comments below. Let's get started. Before we jump into the code, I want to point out a few important setup steps that I've already done. I've installed the DevExtreme and DevExtreme React NPM packages. I've added a DevExtreme style sheet to the main.tsx file. And in the index.html file, I added the class name dxViewport to the body tag. These steps are essential for the proper rendering and theming of all DevExtreme components. If you want more information about setting up a DevExtreme project, check out our Getting Started documentation below. Let's start by defining the users who will participate in the chat. We import the chat types from DevExtreme and define two constants, user and assistant. These objects represent the participants in the chat session. The user is the person interacting with the chat. The assistant is our AI model, and we give it a display name of virtual assistant. Now let's configure how the chat messages are stored and retrieved. We begin by importing use callback and use state from React. The chat types type from DevExtreme React slash chat custom store and data source from DevExtreme slash data slash data source in the assistant object we just created in the data.tsx file. We will also define the Olama message type, which represents the shape expected by the Olama chat API. Next, we set up an in memory message store. This is a simple array that holds all chat messages in memory. Here we wrap the message array in a custom store, which is DevExtreme's data loading system. The load function returns the current messages and the insert function appends a new one. We use the data source class to expose the message store to the DevExtreme chat component. Pagination is disabled to show all messages. Now we create a utility function called data item to message to adapt DevExtreme messages to the Olama format. This function ensures each message has an author and returns it in the shape Olama expects. Now we create a function called getMessageHistory. This function converts the last 10 chat messages into a history array and prepends a system message that tells Olama to avoid markdown formatting. It's important to note the DevExtreme chat component supports rich text and we provide information in our documentation on how to convert markdown into the proper format. This function, getAIResponse, is the main API call. We send a POST request to the Olama server with our model and prompt. In this case, we use Llama 3.2 model, but you can use the model of your choice. We check that the response is valid, extract, and return the message content. Next, we create the use API hook, which provides reusable methods and state. We begin by tracking alerts. The alerts we set appear in the chat component if necessary. Next, we have an insert message function to update our data source with the store.push method. Finally, the fetch AI response callback function calls our get AI response method, passing in our messages and inserts the AI response into our chat. Now let's connect it all in our main React component in app.tsx. We import everything we need, including the DevExtreme chat component and the code we just wrote. We extract the values from our use API hook. We create two local state variables that help us show typing indicators and indicate when the response is processing. In the process AI request callback function, the is processing and typing users state variables are set. The AI response is returned and the state variables are reset to their initial values. In our on message entered callback function, we make sure the user entered a valid message, insert the message using the insert message function from our use API hook, make sure there are no alerts and await our AI response. Now we can add our DevExtreme chat component. We pass in our data, user identity, typing indicators, and alert system. 
We set the show avatar property to false in this case, but feel free to look through our demos and documentation to explore all the options our chat component has to offer. I will also note the DX chat disabled class is conditionally applied while waiting for the assistant to respond. In our main.css file, this class sets an opacity of 0.8, making the chat interface slightly faded to indicate it's temporarily disabled. Now let's run the app with npm run dev in the terminal. Now let's try a couple of messages in the app. We'll ask, tell me a joke. And immediately the AI provides a plain text answer. While the chatbot is thinking, the chat component displays that the virtual assistant is currently typing. And the chat window's opacity is changed. Let's try one more. Tell me about JavaScript. And again, the assistant replies clearly. And finally, to show that our chatbot retains the memory of past messages, we can ask, tell me more. And again, it gives us more information about JavaScript. And that's our complete chat integration. You can find demos and documentation for the DevExtreme chat component on our website at js.devexpress.com including a demo and in integrating our chat component with Azure OpenAI and advanced features such as custom rendering and buttons to regenerate responses. For this tutorial, I've kept things simple so we can focus on the core concepts. If you found this useful, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and drop any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.